Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my 2021 beauty favorites. Now in previous years when I've done my beauty roundups, it's usually the last video of Landmas and I'm saying my goodbye for the year, saying farewell, and it's just a big, long, bulky, chatty video. And this year I actually wanted it to be more of a casual video, so I'm, I'm not making it my final video of Landmas 2021. So there's still some videos in Landmas to come after this. This isn't gonna be my last video of 2021, but I've got all the products out in front of me. I went through all my old videos and picked out truly my standout favorite products from the year. And I would love to hear from you guys, what were some of your favorite products during the year of 2021? What products did you discover? What products did you not like? I would love to hear what your favorites are and I would love to hear what your thoughts are on mine. If you like these videos, like these beauty roundup videos, please do give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more of these and let us dive in to my favorite beauty of 2021. So I'm gonna go by categories on the face and, and just go from where I would start with my makeup to where I would end. And I'm just gonna go through how I would apply my makeup and, and attack each category from there. So we're gonna start with primers. Now this past year was the year that I discovered pore filling primers. I'm a creature of habit with many things, primers being one of them. I have a lot of consistent favorites that I have used over the years, but this year I really dove into the world of pore filling primers. And I tried a lot of different ones, but I would have to say that my standout one in terms of performance and price would be the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I love the packaging of this one. It's very, very, usable, very easy to use. It's like a solid bomb, but when you press it in, it ends up going onto your skin like, like a lotion or a cream. Um, it totally fills the pores, has a blurring effect. It performs like any other high-end product that I have used that does the same thing, and you really can't beat e.l.f. pricing. And I feel like out of all the ones that I tried this year, this is the one that remained in my everyday makeup bags. And yeah, I just really like discovered the size of my pores this year. <laughs> yeah, this year was really big in the pore front, and we tried a lot of products, and this one, this one reigns supreme, my friends. I wanna talk about a hydrating primer. This year I also did uh, a full face of Laura Mercier. I actually titled it What Happened to Laura Mercier, which was really funny, and that was earlier in the year, and I kind of rediscovered a lot of Laura Mercier products that I had had in my collection, some new products that came in, and kind of went on a, on a big Laura Mercier dive, and really fell in love with the Pure Canvas Primer, the hydrating one. Here is the Beauty here. They have a number of different versions of their uh, Pure Canvas Primer. I, I really like the hydrating one. I'm wearing it today. It's been one of those products that since I filmed that full face video has kind of remained like within my reach and I really enjoyed it. So as a hydrating primer, something new in, something that I kind of rediscovered and retried this year, that was definitely a favorite in the, in the hydrating category of primers. So those are my favorites for primers. Let's move into foundations, tinted moisturizers, base products. Like guys, I couldn't, I was so hard. I went through all the videos and I'm like, I truly use the same things over and over and over and over again. Last year my foundation favorite one of them was the l'oreal age perfect foundation which i really loved and i think i just want to give a shout out to l'oreal for this year as well because there were multiple products that i have tried throughout the year and i'm constantly impressed by them I think their price point is getting out of hand for a drugstore product, but the L'Oreal foundations in general, like most of the time across the board, perform just like my high-end foundations. I use them interchangeably in my collections. And this year they launched the True Match Super Blendable Foundation, which is their like original True Match foundation, but the hydrating version. Love the pump, loved it, used it so much this year. And then also recently they launched the True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. So in general, L'Oreal has just been crushing it with the base products, and those were definitely some huge favorites of mine this year. And in terms of like the tinted moisturizer spectrum, there were so many new ones that I tried this year. <laughs> but I think consistently the two favorites based on like my winter skin as well as my summer skin were these two bad boys right here. The Glowish Multi-Dew Skin Tint and the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. Both of these just have graced my face multiple times throughout the year. The Glowish one is like reaching the point of emptiness. They they have been used and loved by me and both have existed for, for many weeks and months on end in my daily makeup bags. And considering how many new products I did try this year, the fact that I kept reaching back to these over and over again, just uh, show that they deserve the top spot. They deserve to be favorites on my face. Now concealer, you guys like, you guys know what this is gonna be. I don't even need to say it, but this year was the year of the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Self Setting Concealers. I have had these in multiple shades. This is where I really started consistently using two different shades on my face when it came to my daily makeup. And I actually pulled these out again today because I wanted to do my makeup using my favorite products. And over the last couple of weeks, I've been using like the Too Faced Born This Way concealer and I put this on and I was like, oh, it just felt like coming home. Truly, I've never tried a better concealer. These ones out of, out of like, general, like lifelong favorites, this is the best concealer 
I have ever used. It goes with everything. It works with everything. The consistency is perfect. Buildable coverage. Blends out and looks like your natural skin. And I just use this all year long. Such a favorite. I need to know if you guys have tried the Make It Forever Ultra HD self-setting concealer. Thank you, Katie Jane Hughes, for, for really bringing that into our lives. She was the reason why I had tried this to start, and I'm so glad that I did, and it was such a such a favorite from this year so i want to move on to bronzers and contours and i'm putting that in one category bronzers and contours but then there's also cream and then there's powder and again a lot of consistent favorites from the year i couldn't believe that this was the year that i had played with and discovered the huda beauty tantor i totally thought that i had been using that for so much longer but alas it was this year I use this one in the shade Fair, and it's just such a great product. It's so easy to blend out. It's literally a, a contour and a bronzer in one, which is those multi-use products that I love. The tone for my skin tone is absolutely perfect. They have a number of shades in these. I really like the packaging. It's just so easy to use, and it's been such a fabulous product and a huge, huge favorite from this year. Big discovery from this year. And then towards the summer, <laughs> like I couldn't not mention this, even though it was a limited edition product. I'd be shocked if they didn't make this a permanent product. Honestly, I really hope that they do, and I hope that they expand the shade range to follow suit kind of like the Huda Beauty Tantor but I had to mention the NARS Casino cream bronzer. <laughs> this was a part of their summer collection but I just use this to death. This has gotten so much love. I love the tone of it. It's just perfect and honestly they're really similar so you could use one or the other and it would do the exact same thing. It feels the same on the skin. This one was just limited and I just like the packaging. It's fun and summery and bronzy but those ones were such favorites from this year. I just I've, I've really become a full-blown cream bronzer bronzer and contour gal along with my Smith 157 brush like that was just a consistent process in my makeup routine this year so huge favorites a drugstore dupe that I did try later on and that I think would just rival any of the cream contours and bronzers in the world is the elf putty bronzer I have this one in the shade tan lines it's a little bit lighter than those two options that I use in my makeup routine but as far as a drugstore dupe goes I really it's a little bit lighter it's a little bit less pigmented than those two but you can still build it up it's kind of it's almost a little Little bit more creamy but it's the same it's the same product it does the same thing it performs just as well and this was such an amazing launch from elf this year so i'm just including that as a favorite yes i know that's three favorites of literally the same products but it's true i use them all all year long and they're they're equally as beautiful and yes sometimes in my everyday makeup bag i could have all three of these and more sitting there because cream contours and bronzers it's one of my favorite steps in my makeup routine and those are fabulous speaking of uh, powder bronzers i'm sure you guys will know what i'm going to mention the hula glow they have had the hula bronzers for years they recently expanded those shade ranges which is excellent i would love for them to do the same with the glow edition but they came out with their classic most beloved bronzing product in a glowy version and this is just filthy like literally <laughs> The packaging is destroyed all around. This has been banged up and in my everyday makeup bag since it launched. And I, I love to layer up my bronzers. I always love to go over top with a glowy one. This one and my Lila B bronzing duo is just, they're just constants in my makeup bag. And I'm so happy that they came out with the glow version of this. It's just one of those really nostalgic throwback products. And, and I love that they've kept their packaging the same, even though it's not the most it's not the most convenient, but it works and it makes me feel like just all the memories every time I use this. And yeah, the glow from Benefit, this one launching this year, absolutely massive. Much like the the pore discovery from this year, I've really just become, I've become a powder gal officially. And that all started last year when my favorite was the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. That was a big moment for me last year and that has continued into this year. This is my current Flawless Finish Powder. She has remained a favorite and constant in my collection. Collection. And I actually tried a number of different powders this year because I was like, well, I'm a powder woman now. I'm just going to try them all. So I tried many, even though this one stayed constant. But I think that the biggest, like most viral launch that happened this year and one of the favorite ones that I've tried and as well, it's a lower price point being a drugstore product, the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear Powder, my friends. This product really came out with a bang on TikTok. Everyone was raving about it. It was a product that I waited so long to get my hands on. It took, it took its time coming to us in Canada after it had already had 
it's a moment on TikTok, but even though this is a foundation and a powder, I, I use it like a powder and it's really beautiful. I really don't notice the difference between using this and my other products. I think like Charlotte Tilbury is always just like a luxury to use, you know, like you can't really beat Charlotte Tilbury packaging. Like I use this just the same, but I prefer this packaging uh, when I'm like carrying it around and going outside. You know, I also bought the travel, the mini size of this one, and I keep that in my purse when I'm going out on the rare occasions that that is these days. <laughs> but as far as the product goes, it's just the same and it's beautiful. And I'm really glad that I discovered it this year. Such a fave. So moving on to highlights, my favorite highlights from the year. I think perhaps if you guys have watched my channel this year or if you're new here, then you'll know exactly what I'm about to say. But if you're new here and you didn't know, this year I actually had two major launches, which I'm gonna be talking about both of them side by side here. And earlier in this year, I was able to launch my collection with Mac. And this was a curated box that launched both in Canada and the US. And it was a collection of five of my favorite full-size products from Mac, which was so exciting. This was such a pinch me moment. And it was really, really amazing to be able to celebrate this and talk about it throughout the year. I was so proud of it. It has five of my most favorite all-time Mac products in here. And the star of the show for me was the fact that they allowed me to put the Whisper of Guilt highlight in there, which has been a favorite of mine for years. This used to be a limited collection from Mac. They brought it out permanent, and then they let me put a full size into my Mac kits at a 50% discount, which was absolutely <laughs> mind blowing to me. And I am so grateful to Mac for working with me on this kit. And I was so excited for it to be launched this year. And so for that reason alone, my friends, Whisper of Guilt was a favorite all year long. I mean, it's always been a favorite, but I also have to tell you that I did a vigorous dropping of this and my sweet, sweet highlight is currently cracked and falling out of the packaging. So I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to get a new one of this, but truly one of the most universal and beautiful flattering shades of highlight that I could ever recommend to you. The formula is perfect. And I did use many highlights this year, especially if I was like dabbling into liquid and cream highlights, but this one, this one was a constant favorite and it will forever be a constant favorite. It's gorgeous. If you haven't tried Mac Whisper of Guilt, girlfriend, you gotta get on it. And for those of you who picked up my kit this year and, and supported that launch, thank you so much. I was so happy that you were able to save some major dollars on some of my Mac favorites. And if you tried Whisper of Guilt for the first time because of my kit, I would love to hear your thoughts, especially, especially on the Whisper of Guilt highlight, but that was such a favorite, such a favorite from this year. And the second collaboration that I launched this year, like two, two major moments this year. And that was my entire collaboration with nude sticks and the launch of my picante nudies matte blush and the beachy nudes kit yes i still do keep my tin of my beachy nudes kit in the box because the box is where all of the artwork is and and my photos and everything i actually in hindsight i was kind of sad that we didn't do the same for picante because there's nothing on here that would indicate that this was this was my shade of blush and that's probably why i, I still just keep this in here <laughs> So here is the Vici Nudes kit. I just absolutely love her. It has my Ficante blush in it, as well as my two other favorites, Bondi Bay bronzer and the Bubbly Bay Bay highlight. And you get three little minis in there. And this was just such a fun project. It was such a fun shoot. And I'm so proud of Picante. This was, sorry, we're, we're jumping into the next product here, but technically these have blushes, bronzers, and highlights. So those were definitely favorites from the year. The so Picante was really the, the hero shade of all of this. And it was the shade that I wanted to create with nude sticks. And I was so, so happy that they did this with me and I just felt like there was a void missing in my blush world. You guys know I love to be bronzed. I love everything summer. I love glowy and I love orange blush. And I just felt like there was a huge gap missing in the blush world. A lot of blushes um, really pulled like a, like a grapefruit or a little bit more pink as you blended them out. And I just really wanted a true orange <laughs> to grace my, my glowing bronze summer skin. And I'm so thrilled to see how many of you have loved Picante and it truly works across all skin tones. And I think it just looks beautiful beautiful on absolutely everyone. And this was such an exciting uh, project to be able to launch and work on this year. And thank you guys so much for all of the love on this. And to my international folks who have not previously been able to get your hands on this, big things coming in 2022. So stay tuned for that. I will keep you guys posted, but she's going to be much more widely available going into next year, which is very, very exciting. So big picante love forever and uh, big news coming in 2022. 
Now in general, moving on to blushes, I truly, truly couldn't like, I mean, this was the, this was the biggest launch for me. Obviously this was my baby. This was my blush that came out this year. So it's hard to top that, but there were also a lot of other blushes that I used. And I just want to quickly give a little shout out to some of my faves that you guys have seen. Merit Mood Blush. This was a huge favorite. Love this color. This is very appropriate for the season that we're currently in, but also all year round. Love the packaging. Love Merit. This was a, a big play in discovery from this year. Rose Ink Dahlia. It's absolutely foul. The packaging is already very disturbed. <laughs> But this has gotten so much love, me in this little this little toilet seat. <laughs> a much more recent launch, but I have to give a shout out to the Victoria Beckham blushes just because this was a very anticipated launch for me and I was very excited to get my hands on it. And Major is my favorite shade, this beautiful neutral pink. Love her, love the packaging. And I just gotta give a shout out to the Dior Backstage blush that I can't open because she just really made a resurgence in the beauty community this year. She popped off on TikTok. This went viral and everyone went crazy and including myself. This has been a very long time favorite of mine and she just got a, a whole new rebirth this year and she's been sold out since, which is very frustrating. I know when I'm talking about it and trying to show you guys the blush, but yeah, absolutely gorgeous and all time fave there. So there's just a, a couple of, of blushes that came to mind when I thought of my favorite discoveries from this year. It's a lot, there's five, that's five blushes. <laughs> I am so sorry. Let's move on to eyebrows. I think you guys know what I'm gonna say, but this year was a big discovery for me. First of all, the Anastasia Brow Freeze just lived its life, had its moment. I used an entire one up. This was my second one that I bought this year and half of it is already used up. The Anastasia Brow Freeze like really changed my brow game life this year for those really slicked back laminated feathery brow. And this paired with my NYX brow tint pen, which were both discovered this year. This has been the year of the brow freeze and the NYX brow tint pen. I don't currently have the brow tint pen because the first pen I had was so fabulous and I had used it all year like since. Since February and then I bought the second one and it just kept exploding on my eyebrows and I was so angry <laughs> uh, I threw it in the garbage because it wasn't working I think I got a faulty pen and since then I have been using my Dior brow styler as well as my benefit 24-hour brow gel but if we were to talk about my favorites from the year those two products were my absolute brow favorites I use them all year long and uh, I couldn't get enough of them and I talked about them at length and pretty much nothing else touched my brows throughout the year and those were yeah, it was a good it was a good year for brows. Now in terms of eye products, uh, you guys know I'm not the biggest eyeshadow gal in general. I'm on I'm an eyeshadow hoarder. I hoard a lot of palettes, but you know, for the most part in my everyday makeup, like I really just use my bronzer and perhaps an eyeliner and that's my usual go-to every day. So the one major discovery from this year were the MAC brush stroke eyeliners. I discovered the one in brown and that really changed my life. It's a beautiful, beautiful eyeliner. I love the pen and the brown color. It was like my perfect dreamy chocolatey brown. I've also recently picked up the black version and that was really consistent so much throughout this year. I included them in my everyday May giveaways as my favorites and they're also in every single one of my Landmas giveaways. Huge favorite from this year. If you're looking for a liquid eyeliner that's easy to use, look no further. This is the one huge, huge favorite from this year. This year also the Vive I ones were launched. I actually thought it had been longer than that, but I couldn't believe that I had tried them out for the first time. It was in a new makeup video this year. And uh, yeah, that was a really huge launch. And the Vive I ones, but specifically the shade Hazelnut was my fave. And if I'm being honest, I use a lot of different brown eyeliners in my everyday makeup rotation. I love the Victoria Beckham Satin Kajel liners. Uh, the Pat McGrath one I also discovered this year, the Black Coffee one. That was a beautiful brown liner. I use my MAC liners, I use Nude Sticks liners. Like there's so many that I use, but I think in terms of like the excitement of a launch coming from Jamie Genevieve, the I ones were beautiful and I really did consistently use them throughout the year. So Hazelnut's my favorite, but I love the packaging and this was a really, really fab new launch that happened this year. For palettes, uh, I really, I really didn't have one, honestly. There wasn't a palette that I really consistently used throughout the year. I really switched it up this year and mainly it was, it was a big eyeliner year for me this year. How many times have I said year and 2021 already in this video? Don't take a shot. You will, you will not survive that. <laughs> However, when I was looking back through the videos, I was like, what palette is a standout launch for me from this year? What's just my favorite launch that, that came about this year? And 
I'm gonna have to say that it was the Patrick Ta Major Dimension eyeshadow palette. This one came out like, I don't know, like halfway through the year. It was a little bit later in the year that this one launched. But in terms of neutral lovers, my everyday makeup, and then having the powders and the creams, the mattes and your shimmers and your glitter toppers, like this one just really covers all of my basic needs. And because I'm such an eyeliner lover, I just think it's brilliant that he put the cream shadows in there too, a lighter brown and a deeper brown. And I just think this really like was just a very innovative, unique, palette launch and it is on the higher end of the price point spectrum for sure but you get a lot of shades in here and then if you're starting out you're like needing to buy an eyeliner and an eyeshadow palette you just get a little two in one here really a three in one you get two liners or cream products but I, I often use them as liners. <laughs> I just think it was great. I think out of out of all the, the palettes that I tried out of the year, this one was the standout one and I really enjoyed this one. And uh, oh my gosh, speaking of Patrick Ta, ever since I mentioned the cheek palette and you guys were like, no, it's worth it. You gotta try it. It's been out of stock. I haven't even had the option to try the cheek palette since I originally stuck my nose up to it. So I'm regretting that, but. The eyeshadow palette was a win from this year, absolutely. So the next category is mascara, and that's a bit of a tough one because I really, I really do have consistent favorites when it comes to mascara, and at any time I have uh, multiple mascaras that are open and being used in my collection. <laughs> so my favorites are really consistent and continuous uh, from previous years, but I think this year was the year that I discovered the Lancome Lashy Doll Mascara. And though all of my other mascaras and the Tom Ford Badass Black Mascara will forever be favorites, this was just the, the new one, the new discovery from this year. And I do believe this is my second one. I did use up an entire Lashy Doll, and it's beautiful on my little spectrum of mascaras from like most voluminous to least I'd say this fits like right alongside the Charlotte Tilbury full fat lashes they're very similar feelings I like that it has the curved wand and I like that it's tapered so for every day it's very easy to get right in the wiggle around and it's just a very beautiful light and fluttery lash with with a good amount of volume and was a big favorite. I think Lancome, they don't launch many products. There aren't many products specifically from Lancome that exist in my makeup collection, but they do do mascaras very well. Let's move on to lips. Now, I'm just gonna warn you right now, in terms of like lipsticks, I, I don't have a favorite. I didn't pick a favorite. I don't have a favorite to talk to you about. I use the same products over and over and over again. I have my same favorites. There were so many, like literally I could list you like 30 products that I use on the daily when it comes to lips. Like actually one that comes to mind actually is my, my Burt's Bees Squeezy Tinted Balm. That one came out this year and that was exciting. I also used my Picante, which is a cheek and lips product. So this was a, a huge, huge like lip gracing product that I, I used this year. My Shiseido Lip Balms, Tower 28 Glosses, Kosas Glosses, Victoria Beckham Lipsticks, all of the Dior lip products. Like there's so many lip products. So I'm just gonna mention a category favorite and that would be lip stains because I rediscovered lip stains this year. It was later in the year, but the lip stains in general, like the Ella Luz lip stain and the Victoria Beckham lip stains. That was just a, a category rediscovery for me this year. So I don't, I do not have a specific favorite to mention and I am sorry. I'm wearing Shiseido Sakura though which has been a consistent favorite for a very long time for me. But let's talk about lip liners. Let's talk about lip liners because there's obviously two that come to mind for me as favorite lip liners, and that is my Victoria Beckham O2 Lip Pencil, which is still holding on by a thread. We've got a little nubbin left. Love her, love the shade use that forever. That was also my favorite from 2020. But a new discovery from this year was the NYX Natural Lip Pencil. And this one has been equally involved in my everyday makeup collection. The shade is perfect. It's the lip liner I have on now with my uh, Shiseido. Sorry, I just keep mentioning it. This, this is my Shiseido Lip Balm in the shade Sakura. This is the one that I'm wearing with my lip liner right now. And yeah, that was new in this year and made it made a huge impact on my lip liner life. And so though there were many lip products used throughout the year, the lip liners were really, really consistent. And that was a big, a big moment for me. And as well, because I, I use lip liners so much like by themselves, I'll just blend in a lip liner when I'm feeling lazy. If I want it to be extra juicy, I'll add a gloss, but we were also really in masks like still this year. So truly in my daily life, if I was going out, like I wouldn't really do much more than a lip liner. And that's where the lip stains came in because those uh, made a nice impact towards the end of this year. And when I'm going out and I need to be putting a mask on, I can't really put anything else on without it just uh, rubbing away completely. So that's my spiel on the lips. I have one more favorite to mention from the year. Well, well, technically two, but this one's been consistent. Like my MAC Fix Plus Coconut was also in my kit with MAC, which is very exciting. <laughs> this had also once upon a time been a limited edition product and then they re-released it and came out with all of the scented ones. Coconut is my favorite. I really, I need to get a new one. I always, like no matter what, in my makeup collection, I have my MAC Fix Plus forever and always, but 
this year was really the year of the benefit professional. And I had just had to add that at the end as a spray favorite <laughs> because so often in the past, like I've, I've tried a lot of uh, makeup setting sprays. I use a lot of different ones. I actually have quite a few in my collection, but this one's alcohol free. It's got a great scent. It, the, the spray is continuous and it is so fine. And I love the feeling it gives to my skin. This is my second bottle. I've used up an entire one and this was new in this year. And it completely just changed the game for me in terms of setting sprays. And I just, it made me re-fall in love with setting sprays specifically. Like this one's like a hydrating fixer kind of multi-use spray. This one's a setting spray. And I feel like it's just, just, I've really refined my base and I can't get enough of this one. It's such a favorite. If you look through all my videos, like this is a constant in every single video since it's been launched. Benefit absolutely nailed it with this and I, I couldn't recommend it more. It's a beautiful setting spray and especially if you don't like to have a, a strong alcohol content in your setting sprays like many others do. Try this one. She is beautiful and I have loved her, loved her so this year. So that is my roundup everyone. Those are all of the products that I discovered and used and loved throughout this year. And some of them, you know, might've been later discoveries, but when I went back through my vids, these were these were the products that, that came to mind and really were used consistently throughout the year. And I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on my top picks from the year? Your thoughts on my beauty roundup? Were you surprised by some products or could you pretty much guess what each of the products were gonna be. <laughs> I would love to hear your thoughts guys in the comments below and please do let me know any of the products that you loved or did not love throughout the year of 2021. It feels so odd to just be like ending this like a normal video because again usually my beauty roundups are like my final video of the year and like saying goodbye until next year but yeah I just really wanted to do a, a good old casual beauty roundup. I love you guys a lot. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you all tomorrow for a new Landmas video. Bye!